Hi, this is Anne with a quick anagram on task number three for this starting week. Uh, I want to show you, walk you through how you create um, this first little web replit that has just one line of text in it. And um, there'll be more videos later about the actual features of the integrated development environment we're using, but I just didn't want to leave you hanging with instructions that may not make sense this first week. So, um, what I'm going to do is just walk you through these three slides. Um, basically, uh, once you've created your account, how to get to creating a new REPL, um, how to, what to, changes to make, and how to test it. Um, and this will take you um, substantially less time than it takes me to walk through it, I'm pretty sure. So it's a little hard to predict where you're going to land when you create your new account or when you go to do this work. So you may either land on an enrollments um, page that shows you which courses you are enrolled in for this semester in Replit. Um, we don't use this particular format, so um, don't click on, you don't need to click on these. Um, this will just take you down a rabbit hole to, to a place where there's no real content for you. Um, you will get your um, assignments from links in the, in the slides. So um, basically you may end up here, you may end up on um, a homepage. This uh, particular account belongs to one of my cats um, who is a busy little cat and has many different um, REPLs already. When you get to this page, um, which can also be gotten to by any place where you can see a My REPLs link, um, it'll be empty. And um, what you are going to do is on whatever page you're on, um, or on your home page or your My REPLs page, you're going to search for this new REPL button. Click that. Okay, and the first thing you always have to do is choose your language. Uh, yours will always be HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Because you have a new account, that may or may not appear as a favorite of yours. Um, so if you don't see that in the list, just start typing HTML and it'll show up. You click it. That establishes the language for the new code that you're about to create. And the name of this exercise, the code for this exercise is hello REPL. And um, yes, I really mean there's no space there. There's no capital there. So this is called snake case, where the first letter is lowercase and then words are distinguished by an uppercase um, letter. So do make that named hello REPL. Um, your account will um, always create public REPLs and um, then just click this create button. Um, and as the slides say, uh, there's good news and there's bad news. When you create uh, an HTML project in REPL, in Replit, um, you get valid code that would run and, um, and does run. Unfortunately, the way they wrote this example is that you can push this green run button and technically it will work, but you don't see anything here in the output because there's literally nothing on this web page. So if we go to page two um, of the, the slide instructions for this, I'm actually going to skip ahead one step and um, you're always welcome to type things out. Um, I'm kind of lazy. That's one of the distinguishing characteristics of a good coder. So I'm just going to capture this text and move it here and put it um, inside the body. So I'm creating a new paragraph element inside the body element of this HTML page. And I'm going to change the name to Winston's. Okay, so Winston Raff just created this page and it never hurts to test more frequently. We haven't finished the instructions on the slides, but we can still run this page. And now suddenly we see that in fact, it, when I hit the run button, it is working. And on this result page, I can see the content that I just added. So if I go back to my slides, um, it says change the title tag to contain your name instead of replit. So let's see if we can find that. Uh, okay, so 
anything inside those angle brackets is a tag. Here's a tag with, it's called title, that's a good clue, and it says replet, and we're just going to change it to Winston's name. And um, you're not going to see that right away, um, I may show that to you in a minute. Um, and then we're going to just take our heart in our hands and um, we want to change the background color for this page. So um, the best example you have for the syntax for that is really here. Um, you can see that here in my example I've got a body tag and then I just simply have BG color equals cornflower blue. Um, that happens to be a color that the cat and I like. So we're going to go here and we're going to find this body tag and try to see if we can remember the syntax here. Okay, and that's looking about right. Um, one of the things about this environment is you get col colorization and if your colors are looking right, chances are your text is looking right. So I'm going to test this again. Okay, and now I have a blue page. Um, if I change this to light purple, which I think is a valid um, color, uh, I'm getting dark blue, okay. Um, but that may be a, a screen issue. So I'm just gonna go back to the color I like that's not too dark. Um, okay, and now if I go back and I double check my work, I have change the title, change the color, and added this paragraph. And the order I did this in is not really super essential. Um, in fact, now that I'm looking at it, I may change this slide to have you go ahead and do this first. Um, if that doesn't confuse things too much, um, I've been known to change things on the fly before. So when you get to this slide, it's gonna look like the order I did things in, um, as opposed to the order that, that this slide was when I started doing this um, example. Uh, always trying to make things better. So now if I come back here, I've added this cornflower blue again, I hit run, I get this nice um, nice looking page. And then um, what we're not seeing is this title. So just really briefly, this result output uh, is an okay first look for very simple pages. But as we work through the semester more and more, you're going to want to open this page in a separate web browser tab. And the way you do that is click on this little symbol here, handily labeled open in a new tab. And um, one of the things you do that happens there is that's where you see the page title is the tab takes the text of the title. Um, contents the same, background colors the same. So the only other thing left um, for that task is to take a screenshot, okay? And um, I'm gonna leave the instructions for screenshots to a separate video. I'm gonna go ahead and take it on my machine, which is a wi Windows machine. If you don't have a Windows machine or you don't have the same tools installed or the same version, you may need to look up how to do this, okay? So um, it's not obvious, uh, it's a technical term, when I talk about taking a screenshot, I am not talking about getting out your cell phone and taking a picture of your monitor. Uh, it's a perfectly reasonable assumption. It just doesn't happen to be right in this case. So um, in general, every operating system has tools these days for taking a screenshot. I have this one because I have a Windows 10 machine that's called Snip and Save or Snip and Sketch. And um, it opens up an application, I click the new button, and then I go in and I highlight what it is I want to uh, I want to have in my screenshot, and that takes a picture straight from my monitor. The details on your system are gonna are gonna be different. If you need help with this, let me know. But I just wanted you to see what I meant by a screenshot. And then, depending on your tool, you can save this, uh, which I think I'll go ahead and do. Uh, to some sort of downloads folder. I hi actually highly recommend you make a folder on your hard drive specifically for this class. Um, but in this case, just to be real quick, I'm going to just go ahead and save this image file. And having done so, 
um, in my downloads folder. I have it set up so that the last um, file I saved is right here. So there's a piece of the directions where you are supposed to drag and drop this screenshot over to your replit. Okay, you don't have to do anything with it here. Uh, I just want to be able to see it. I want to, I need to know that you know how to take screenshots and you know how to use them in different ways, including dragging them to your project and also using them in the document that you are turning in. So that's part of the work for this week. If you don't know how to do it, ask for help. Thanks a lot.